So it is Monday, February 23rd now, and everything keeps trucking along. We will be leaving shortly. Whether we're leaving in an RV, whether we're leaving on a plane to Hawaii, whether we're leaving a house, or we're trying to sell the house, none of that stuff do we really know anymore, but we will be leaving shortly. On the whole home front thing, um, basically did a couple of dump runs today, so keep trying to get rid of stuff. It's amazing how much crap you build up. I mean, I, I don't know how many dump runs I've done up until this point, but then again, you know, I did another two entire dump runs today where I shoved the Prius, which is much crap as possible. But I think we're down on the dump runs. I think I might have to do one more dump run at the end of the day. But other than that, I think we're pretty good on the dumped stuff. We've still got stuff going out to, uh, um, uh, what's it called? A place you give away stuff to. Um, where do you give away stuff to? Um, you know, the people that take your stuff and the resell it. Goodwill. Uh, so we, we have some more trips to do to Goodwill. Uh, so that's all, all trucking along. Tonto, we don't know what the hell's going on with Tonto. I swear to you, yesterday, I thought we were going to be putting Tonto down today. But then he ate some food. So basically our idea with, our decision with Tonto is when he stops eating and basically just lays there going blah is when we will put him down. But he did, in fact, eat food yesterday. He only ate like a third of what he normally does, but he ate. And then this morning I watched him poo. So food is going through his system. And then today he was like running around. He was acting like a pretty normal corgi. His back leg is still gimped, but you know, a corgi whose back leg is gimp. He was pretty normal. And he ate some food today too. So what we're kind of wondering, actually, is maybe this whole um, stomach thing, or maybe the not eating, might be because of the meds. So this did, this whole not eating thing happened real soon after when we took him to the vet, and the vet gave him some new meds. So maybe it took a couple of days to build up in a system, and, um, and that was causing him not to eat. You know, maybe. <laughs> and I don't know. Again, that's a whole thing with life. It's like... You got you just you just got the life you got right. So, anyways, we'll be taking him to the vet tomorrow to see what's going on with him. I mean, if if I had to make a bet, a uh, reasonable bet, I would say he has days, not weeks. But then again, who knows? Maybe he'll start eating again and act pretty normal, and maybe we'll we'll get four to six months out of him. So again, that's the whole thing with this adventure and this this trip and all that. So much revolves around that that one adorable little corgi, and we'll we'll see what happens. Uh, but the, the 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 big thing, the the big talking point for this vlog today is the fact that I really hate salespeople. I just can't. So it's we we we're getting the RV as as I talked about before. So we're getting the, the this uh, this travel trailer for us to uh, to go around the country in. And I don't know if I, how much I've talked about it before on this vlog, but RV salespeople really suck. Like as far as salespeople go, they are really bad salespeople. So we went to three different RV dealerships. Uh, three or four, I guess three different RV dealerships, uh, and then an RV show, the, the Maryland RV show before we bought our RV. And so I met a lot of RV salespeople and they were so horrible. Um, it was like the first RV person that our RV place we went to, um, you know, they went in and we sat down with the salesperson and we told them up front, we told the guy up front and was like, listen, we don't, we're really interested in these RV trailers, but we really don't know what we're talking about. So we just want to sit here and talk with you and see see what we can buy, right? So he's like, okay, give, give me your parameters. Okay, fine. So I say, well, we probably want used. We probably want used because it's less expensive. Um, we probably want whatever size I told him. And then he was like, okay, okay, well, uh, oh, I told him that because the towing capacity of this little escape. So I said, you know, we've, we only have 3,500 uh, pounds maximum. So, you know, we need something under that. And he's like, okay, so, so what price are you looking for? And I had just told him, I didn't know crap about travel trailers. So I said, well, I saw these things for $7,000 because I had. I had seen a few of these used travel trailers for $7,000. So if you're going to ask me what price I'm looking for, I'm going to say eh, $7,000, right? You know, the decent price. And so he's like, okay. So he takes that information. He walks away. And then he comes back. And he's like, well, we don't have anything for you. <laughs> and I just looked at him. And I was like, what do you mean? He's like, well, there, there's nothing in that price range. And it's like, you know, I just told him. I didn't know where we were looking. It was like, uh, what do you have in a price range? And it's like, oh. 
So then he came back and there was one for like $11,000. And I was like, okay, can we see that one? But it's like, I was like, had to damn beg him to go look at it. And that was like, that's one of the things I found with these RV salespeople is they're so literal. Like I just told him, I didn't know what we were looking for. And what, what it came out to be, the $7,000 uh, trailers that, that I had seen uh, were overweight. So they were like 4,000 pounds. So there are $7,000 used there, but but they're they're too heavy. But the fact was like I had to pull it out of this guy. I was like I told you I don't know what we're really looking for, and there was no upsell. It wasn't like I sat down with a guy and he said, "Well, we don't have anything for seven thousand dollars. We do have this one for eleven. Can you go to eleven? I can go to eleven. We ended up spending like twelve or thirteen. But there, there wasn't even that option. So, right. So so we did that one. Then we went over to a different day. I was just pissed at him. I was like, if the if the guy's too stupid, to, I mean, if the guy is that stupid. I'm not sure I really want to buy from him. So I go over another RV dealership and it was like the same, like I go in there and then he was like, uh, and I'm like, I'm sorry. Am I bothering you? And then it was like this long, horrible, tedious process where you're sitting there like to buy an RV. Like when you're going to go buy a travel trailer, this is like a super sexy thing. This is a fun toy. This isn't buying a toilet. This isn't buying a new septic system. This isn't buying a water heater. A trailer is cool. And we had this guy like, well, okay, this person's an idiot. Uh, so we left there. I was like, okay, not buy there. Um, and then we went to another place. I actually had a good salesperson there. They just didn't have many products that we could look at. So I was like, okay. So we had like two really crappy salesperson and one. So I was like, okay, whatever. So then we go to the RV show and we go look around and we find like the RV trailer that we want. Cause one of the problems we run into with these RV trailers is it's like, if you can, if you can tow like 5,000 pounds, like sky's the limit, there's a zillion different options. If you can tow 2,500, which is what we can. So it's like, you've got your maximum tow of 3,500, but that's maximum. So if you add water and clothes and all that crap in there. You've got to have some gap. So really you don't want any more than 2,800, 27, 2,800, um, pounds, um, oops, in your, uh, in your trailer, because then, you know what I'm saying? So you can really only do like 27 to 2,800 pounds. So there weren't very many options there. So we're looking at all these different options and then finally we find the one we want. Right. And so we're talking to the guy and he's like, well, so if we get it shipped in from, uh, from Indiana, it'll take like four to six weeks. And we're looking at him and like, well, we don't want it in four to six weeks. Really? Uh, how much quicker can you get it to us? Well, well, we were gonna have this one after the show, and it was like the uh, the, the show model. And I'm looking around the show mo the, the floor model. I'm like, this thing has gotten the hell beat out of it. I don't want this one. And he's like, well, let me let me look. And then he looked, and he saw that there was actually one um, that they had like on their lot. So I'm like, okay, great. We want the one on the lot. How long will it take the one to get on the lot? And it was like, well, I'm like, can we get it in a few days? Can we get it like this week? And so he said, yeah, yeah. You know, close. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So we go, we sign the contract. And so my understanding is that we'll get it by Wednesday. So last Wednesday. So we're talking like, get it like five days ago at this point, right? So, uh, so it was Saturday. So Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. So we were told by the guy we should be able to get in two to three days. So then we go, and like last week was absolutely horrible for weather. Horrible. It was, it was some of the coldest weather we've got in this entire year. Snow, the whole nine yards. So I'm not really worried about it. To be honest with you, we told him three days, but, you know, frankly, there's too much snow where we want to park this thing. So if they want to keep it for a while, no, no big deal. But then we don't hear anything from them at all. So we've given them the money. They've cashed a check, and we have heard literally nothing for them. Nothing for them for an entire week. I then call yesterday, Sunday, leave a message, because they're supposed to be open, leave a message. Don't even get a call back today. So then I call them, and uh, I'm like, hey, I'm trying to figure out what's going on. Did you just take my money and run? When, when are we going to be able to get this thing? And then I'm talking to the guy on the phone. He's like, oh, yeah, well, the, sh the, the floor model's coming back. I'm like, no, mother, I don't want a floor model. I specifically said I don't want the floor model. Oh, Oh yeah, I see here. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, the one on the thing, so we can get that to you March 1st. And it's like, well, that's like a week from now, right? Yeah. It's like, well, we bought this thing over a week ago, so it'll be like two and a half weeks before we get it. Yeah, that sounds about right. And I'm talking to the guy. I'm like, no, that doesn't sound right. I mean, we were told we could get it like three days after we bought it. Oh, 
well, who's your salesperson? I told him the salesperson. He's like, yeah, well, he never told us that. She's like, oh. Now, because of the weather and everything else, to be honest with you, the parking space we're going to put this thing is covered under a foot of snow. So we can wait until March 2nd in order to get this RV trailer. To be honest with you, because of the particular situation of snow and ice and all that kind of stuff, it will work out. But it is just like, what is it with these RV salespeople? These RV salespeople are literally some of the worst salespeople I think I've ever dealt with. They're just utterly incompetent and don't I don't even I don't even get what's going on. I really re and it, and two, this is a toy. Like RV trailers are toys. These are things you buy for fun. These are things because you're excited. They're supposed to be super sexy and cool, and these RV salespeople are just destroying the entire process. Let me tell you, if I did not honestly one RV trailer, I would tell them to go F themselves and give me my money back. But I do want an RV trailer, so I will just suck it up and hopefully we'll get this thing and it will all work out. Or in another week, I will be screaming about however they screwed it up. But yeah, one thing to think about if you guys are going to be going out there and doing sales is just think about the sales process from the, the buyer's perspective. You know, if the buyer says, I don't really know what I'm talking about, then educate them. If the buyer comes in to look for a product, be excited about it. You know, if they do buy a product for you, make sure you communicate. When you write a check that big and then you hear no communication from the other side, that just does not make you feel good in life. You know what I'm saying? So anyways, so that's where we're going with that. So what's happening with the trip and all that. Hopefully we'll have the RV trailer and then we will figure it out from there. March 15th is getting closer and closer and closer. So we've got about three weeks, one way or another, three weeks we should be going. So, uh, so yeah, so there we are. There we are, Monday night. I'm outside my little Kempo class, which is right over there. So it's probably about time for me to go in there. So talk to you guys tomorrow. And like I say, if you guys do the sales process, just, just think about how you do the sales process a little bit. Because I'm, I'm telling you, these RV people, RV salespeople are just shockingly bad. <laughs>